once I open my image into Photoshop, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this layer by clicking on the background layer and just dragging this to this plus icon right here. Or what I can do, I can just press on Ctrl J to duplicate my background layer. After that, I'm just going to run my focus separation action. And you can also use the retouching academy focus separation or any focus separation action that you have. I'm not just going to show you how to use focus separation to retouch your image. I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks on how I get the final results for this image. So stay tuned because you're going to learn a lot from this video. So for the Gaussian blur radius, I'm going to use 7 for this image. And the reason why I use 7 is because I want to retain some textures on the image. I don't want the image to look so smooth. So if you are going for that smooth look, just use a lower blur radius. But if you want to keep textures on your image, use a higher blur radius. So I'm going to use 7 and click on OK. Now for this focus separation, I want to remove the blemishes from this image. So to remove the blemishes, you know doing focus separation will separate the textures and the colors. Now since I want to remove the blemishes and the blemishes consist of textures, I'm just going to come to my high frequency right here, which is this first one right here. I'm going to click on it. Once it's selected, I'll pick my close stamp tool. And for my close stamp tool, I'll make sure I'm using a soft one brush. My mood is normal. Opacity is set to 100, fully set to 100. Align is selected and current layer is selected. All right. Now I'm going to give you a quick tip if you want to use your close stamp tool. You see these textures on the nose that look like blemishes. If I just try to remove them right now by pressing alternate to sample and just remove it. I'm going to remove all the textures right there and it's not going to look good. So if I just zoom in, you just see the before after of that place. So this is the before and this is the after. You can see that place is looking too flat and we don't want it. So here's the quick trick you can do to fix those areas. So just come to your opacity and just take the percent to about 40%. And right now if I just sample and paint over those blemishes, it's not going to remove them 100%. It's just going to remove 40% from those blemishes and just going to soften them out. So if I just show you after you can see, it's not looking all smooth, but those textures are no longer there. So this is the before and this is the after. And not just for the nose, you can do the same thing for the cheek right here. So you can see those blemishes right there on the cheek. We don't want to just remove them 100%. So just reduce us. So just reduce our passes to 40% and just sample and just paint over those blemishes. And if you feel 40 is not enough, you can just change it to 50% and just sample and remove those blemishes on the cheek like that so that's one of the tricks i'm going to share on this video there's many more so i'm just going to remove the blemishes for this image right now so i'm going to take my opacity back to 100 percent and just remove the obvious blemishes so to remove your blemishes make sure you are pressing alternate to sample from a close by area and just paint over the blemishes you want to remove and make sure you are using your square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size according according to the blemishes you are trying to remove like that Okay, so also for this part of the eyes right here that are looking too dark, I'm just going to sample from a close by area and just paint them out like that. So sample and just paint this part out like this. Okay, and I know it's looking dark right now, but we are going to use Dodge and Bone to actually brighten them. We are going to get to that. So I'll do the same thing for this other part of the eyes, sample and just remove those dark place right here on the eyes okay all right and i'll do the same thing for this smile line i'm just going to sample and just paint on the smile lines just to remove it like that all right i've removed the blemish for this image let's just see the before and after so this is the before and this is the after, the before and the after. Now next I'm going to do, I'm going to use Michael Dodge Abon to fix those dark parts under the eyes or any part that is looking too bright and too dark. So I'll just go to my retouching academy and click on Dodge Abon Curves. And I'm just going to delete this visual aid. And you can choose to leave your visual aid, but since I'm not going to go in depth with Michael Dodge Abon, that's why I delete the visual aid. I just want to see the obvious part of the image that's looking too dark or too bright because I'm still going to use focus separation to smoothen it out. So once I run my dodge bone action, I'll just come to my dodge since I want to brighten this part of the eyes. Once I, once my dodge layer is selected, I'll pick my normal brush tool, make sure my opacity is set to 100 and my flow is set to 2%. You can use 1% if you want and smoothing is on 10 and make sure I'm using a soft rank brush. So I'm going to increase my brush size and just paint on this dark part of the eyes just to brighten it up a little bit like that. 
and make sure you're using a white brush because the layer mask is on black so make sure you're using a white brush okay so see the before and the after the before and the after you can see the difference i'm just still going to do it just to make it more bright all right now i'm going to do the same thing for these other eyes i'm just going to brighten this part and i'll pick my bone tool i'm going to burn this part because i feel that looking too bright i'm just going to burn it okay and i'll pick my dodge tool i'm just going to dodge this part as well just to brighten it up just a little bit like this and also i'm going to dodge this part and burn this part just a little bit like that all right now next thing i'm going to do i'm going to dodge this part right here because i feel it's looking too dark so i'm going to dodge it so i'm just dodging the obvious parts that are looking too bright or too dark because i'm going to be using focus separation to actually retouch this image not micro dodge and burn all right now let's see our before and after so these are before micro dodge and burn after micro dodge and burn before and after now next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to run my focus separation again I use my mixer brush to smoothen out the skin. And to do that, I'm just going to come to my action and just click on focus separation and just use 7 like before and click on OK. Now this time, I'll pick my mixer brush too and make sure this place is on transparent. Make sure you're using a soft hand brush and my weight is on 30, my load is on 20, my mix is on 0, my flow is on 30 sample or layer is selected and the reason why my sample or layer is selected is because i'm going to be brushing on an empty layer but if i was to brush directly on the low frequency i'll turn off this sample or layer and this is why i like brushing on an empty layer if i make any mistake on the image i can easily erase it and start from that particular place but when i'm working directly on the low frequency if i make any mistake i will have to delete the whole frequency separation and start all over from scratch so once sample or layer is selected I'm just going to turn off this high texture layer right here and once I click on it, it's just going to remove the textures from this image and it's going to show only the colors of the image. Now with my mixer brush tool selected, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and decrease my brush size and I'm just going to brush in the highlight separately, the shadow separately and the middle separately. Okay, let me explain that if you don't know what that means. So I'm not going to brush this part separately. I'm going to brush this part separately. And also, I'm going to brush this part right here separately. And I'm going to brush this part right here separately. And also, I'm going to brush this part right here on the eyes separately. So I'm going to brush in the highlight separately, shadow separately, and the middle separately. And also, I'm going to be just... And for the transition, I'm just going to brush on the transition like this. So let me just show you how I'll brush on the transition. Either I'm going to brush it like this like like this or i'm going to brush it like this for the transition so that's how i'm going to make the transition smooth like that all right now i'll pick my mixer brush tool turn off my high texture layer and just increase my brush size according to the part which i want to work on and make sure this place right here is on transparent you can see right here is on red so to remove it on transparent you can just click on an empty part to just make it transparent like that all right so I'm going to brush on this shadow part separately like this. So you can see my brush size is big because I'm brushing on a big portion of the image. If I want to work on a small portion like here, I'm going to reduce my brush size to work on this small portion right here. But if I'm working on the bigger portion, I'm going to increase my brush size and work on the bigger portion of the image. Okay. So for the tradition, like I said, I'm going to brush it like this, the way I explained earlier. All right and do the same thing for the mid-tones, the transition, the shadows, the highlights, all right? So remember, don't brush your shadows into the highlights or your highlights into the shadow. If you do that, it's just going to make your image look flat and just going to change the shape of the face of the model. So anywhere you see highlight, just you can see the small highlight on the nose. I just reduce my brush size and just brush on that highlight separately like that. All right? So this part right here, I'm just going to brush it like this. And also this part right here, I'm going to increase my brush size and just brush it like this. So let me just quickly show you the before and after so you can see what I'm trying to do and you can see the massive difference. Alright, so you can see. 
this is the before and this is the after the before and after you can see the shape of the image is still looking good but it's smooth we still have the textures and everything all right so i'm just going to continue and just paint on this part all right i feel it's looking good like this so this is the before and this is the after now looking at the image i can still see some blemishes on the image right here which i need to remove so i just click on my high frequency layer right here pick my close thumb tool just reduce my brush size and just sample from a close by area and just paint over those blemishes up there and since i don't want to remove everything i'm just going to change i'm just going to come to my opacity and just change it to 50 percent and just brush over those blemishes right there which i'm still seeing right now see the before and the after the before and the after now what i'm going to do next i'm going to use my mixer brush to smoothen it out so i'll just click on my brush here layer pick my mixer brush tool hide my high texture layer and just paint on that particular part which i just worked on just to smoothen it out and make it look good okay now see the before and after the before and after the before and after now the next thing i'm going to do i'm just going to retouch the eyes so i'll come to my action i'll click on my eyes at it white nail action and i'm giving that my actions for free if you want to download my actions just check the link in the description below you're going to see where you can actually download my actions for free so i'm going to pick my normal brush tool make sure my opacity is set to 100 flow is set to 100 my final color is set to white and just paint on the white part of the eyes just to reveal those effects right there like this and i'll do the same thing for these other eyes like this and after that i'm going to come to my properties with my layer mask selected i'm just going to feather it like this a little bit to make it softer and just reduce the opacity because i feel it's looking too white so like this works for me so this is the before and this is the after now next thing i'm going to do i want to make the catch light of the eyes pop even more so i'll come back to my adjustment layer i'll click on my brightness and contrast adjustment layer right here and just increase the brightness like this after that i'm going to press on ctrl i to inverse that because i want to apply it only on the catch lights on the eyes those catch lights that's what i want to apply it for so with my white brush selected i'm just going to paint on the catch lights like this the same thing for this other one and now let's see the before and after this is the before and this is the after the before and the after now when i zoom here i saw something right here which i don't really like so i'm going to take this out so i'll come to my frequency separation again come to my high frequency pick my close thumb tool and just take this part out because i really don't like it so i'm going to take it out okay looking much better now now moving on i'm going to show you a trick which you can use to actually make your image pop even more so just create a stamp visible layer by pressing or ctrl shift on its e once you create a stamp visible layer come to your filter and click on sharpen and come to on sharpen mask and for your amount change it to 20 and radius change it to 20 and just click on ok now you can see the image is popping right now but it's affecting the entire image i don't want it to be on the entire image we just want it to be only on the face so to remove it from the entire image i'm going to create a new layer mask and just inverse the layer mask and pick my normal brush tool with my white brush selected which is the foreground is on white i'm just going to paint on only the face to bring that effect on only the face wow you can see the way this image is popping right now so if i just zoom in you're going to see the before and after so this is the before and this is the after and if you feel it's too much you can just reduce the opacity like this okay i feel it's looking good like this now next thing i'm going to do i'm going to create another stamp visible layer by pressing on ctrl shift alternate e and this time i want to make the eyes pop the lips pop and the nose pop and i'm going to come back to my filter again come to my sharpen and click on on sharpen mask and this time instead of 20 i'm going to use 15 radius 15 amount 15 and click on ok now i'm going to add a layer mask since i want to apply it only on the eyes once i add the layer mask i'm going to press on ctrl i to inverse the layer mask pick my normal brush tool opacity 100 flow 100 foreground color set to white and just brush on only the eyes like this and this part of the nose right here and also paint on the lips wow let me just zoom so you can see the before and after so this is the before and this is the after so i'm going to group these two layers together and let me just show you before and after of both layers so this is the before and this is the after you can see the way the image is popping right now now i'm going to show you another trick which you can do to make your image pop as well so i'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on ctrl shift alternate e and this time i'll go to my filter 
I count my blur and I count my Gaussian blur. Now for this Gaussian blur radius, the number you are going to use is the number of your camera megapixels. If your camera megapixel is 15, make sure your Gaussian blur radius right here is set to 15. Because this Nikon Z5 megapixel is 24, so I'm going to change the blur radius to 24 and just click on OK. After that, I'm going to come to my blend mode, change it from normal to soft light. Now I'm just going to reduce the opacity according to this image. So for this image, I'm going to use 30 because 30 works for me. So this is the before and this is the after. You can see the contrast that's added to the image. The before and the after. And if you feel it's too much, you can just reduce the opacity even more. But I feel, let's use 25 for this image, the before and after. So 25 works for me for this image. So I'm going to group everything and show you where we started from and where we're at now before we move on. So this is the before and this is the after, the before and the after. Wow. Now, before I start retouching the hair or work on the hair, I'm going to color grade this image inside of camera. Raw. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on Ctrl Shift Alternate E. Once I create a stamp visible layer, I'm going to come to my filter and convert it for smart filter so that I can go back and make any adjustment if I want to. So once I convert for smart filter, I come back to filter again and click on camera raw filter. And I'm just going to come down to my calibration tab right here, and I'm going to move the blue primary up to about. As you 60, 60 works for me. So the before and the after, the before and the after. Right now, I feel the image is looking too warm or too red. So I'm going to come back to my color mixer right here. For my color mixer, I'm going to cut my saturation and just come to my oranges and just reduce the saturation of the oranges a little bit, like this, and also reduce saturation of the reds a little bit, like this. So I like this color grading like this, the before and the after, the before and the after. Wow. So I'm going to click on OK. Now, let's see our overall before and after what we started from where we are right now. So these are before and these are after, our before and after. Now to learn how to retouch or fix the hair, click on this video show right here. I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay creative.